Welcome back to Turn Back Time, where we uncover the fiery secrets of our planet. Today we're talking about something explosive, volcanoes. Have you ever wondered what causes these massive mountains of fire to erupt? Or why some are calm and others are like nature's ticking time bombs? Let's dive into the science of how volcanoes are made, why they erupt, and how they shape our world. Spoiler, it's a story of heat, pressure, and a whole lot of molten rock. To understand volcanoes, we first need to look inside our planet. Earth has layers like a cake, except this cake has a molten core instead of frosting. The crust is what we live on, but just beneath it lies the mantle, a hot, semi-solid layer. Heat from the core causes convection currents in the mantle. Think of it like a lava lamp. Hot material rises, cools, and sinks back down. This movement is the engine behind plate tectonics. Oh, and by the way, the mantle is about 2,900 kilometers thick, nearly the distance from Brisbane to Perth in Australia, New York to Denver in the US, or Paris to Moscow in Europe. Plate tectonics. The Earth's crust isn't one solid piece. It's broken into massive plates that float on the mantle. Volcanoes are usually found where these plates interact. Convergent boundaries, where plates collide, like the ring of fire around the Pacific Ocean. Divergent boundaries, where plates pull apart, such as in the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Hotspots, these are wild cards where magma punches through the crust, far from plate boundaries like in Hawaii. These movements are slow, just a few centimeters a year, but over millions of years they've reshaped continents and oceans. Now let's talk about magma and lava. Magma is molten rock trapped beneath the surface. It's super hot. Think 1,200 degrees Celsius hot. That's 2,192 degrees Fahrenheit. Once magma erupts from a volcano, it reaches the surface. It's called lava. But magma doesn't just randomly decide to rise. It's under immense pressure. And when cracks form in the crust, boom, it erupts. Sometimes these eruptions can last for weeks or even months, constantly reshaping the land around them. Lava can flow at different speeds depending on its composition. Some move slowly, like syrup while others rush down at speeds of up to 60 kilometers per hour, or 37 miles per hour, destroying everything in its path. Interestingly, when lava cools, it solidifies into new rock, gradually reshaping the landscape. Not all volcanoes are created equal. Let's break it down. Shield volcanoes. These have gentle slopes and ooze lava, like Mauna Loa in Hawaii. Their eruptions are usually less explosive because the lava is low in viscosity, allowing it to flow freely over long distances. Over time, this creates wide, massive structures that can stretch for hundreds of kilometers. Composite volcanoes. Also known as stratovolcanoes, these are the dramatic ones. Tall, steep, and layered. They form from alternating eruptions of lava and ash, which is why they're known for being both beautiful and deadly. Examples include Mount St. Helens and Mount Fuji. Their eruptions are often explosive, producing pyroclastic flows and ash clouds that can affect areas far from the volcano itself, cinder cone volcanoes. These are the smallest and simplest of the bunch. Made mostly of ash, cinders, and rock fragments, they have steep sides and often form quickly over a single eruption cycle. While they may not be as impressive in size, they're fascinating for their rapid development and temporary nature. And then there are supervolcanoes. Rare, but incredibly powerful. While not a specific type like the others, 
these can have eruptions that release thousands of cubic kilometers of material, impacting the entire planet. Yellowstone in the U.S. is a famous example of a supervolcano. Each volcano type is shaped by the chemistry of its magma, the tectonic setting, and the eruption style. Volcanoes aren't always above ground either. Submarine volcanoes make up the majority of Earth's volcanic activity, hiding their firepower beneath the ocean's surface. Now let's chat about why volcanoes erupt. Eruptions happen when pressure builds in the magma chamber. Gases like water vapor and carbon dioxide get trapped in the magma. As it rises, the pressure decreases and the gases expand, kind of like shaking a soda bottle and popping the top. Depending on the magma's viscosity, eruptions can either be a slow ooze or a violent explosion. The more viscous the magma, the more dramatic the eruption. This is why some eruptions can hurl ash and rock kilometers into the air. Not all eruptions are dramatic, though. Some volcanoes release gases and magma slowly, creating lava domes or steady flows. These effusive eruptions can continue for months or even years, quietly reshaping the landscape. By studying how and why eruptions occur, scientists can better predict volcanic activity, potentially saving lives in areas at risk. And did you know that even small gas leaks or ground swelling around a volcano can indicate that an eruption is brewing? Volcanologists use these subtle signs to monitor active volcanoes around the world. Eruptions reshape the landscape, creating craters, calderas, and even entire islands. Lava flows can destroy everything in their path, but volcanic ash makes soil incredibly fertile, helping plants thrive. In fact, volcanic regions are often some of the most agriculturally productive places on Earth which is why people continue to live near these unpredictable giants. Earth isn't the only place with volcanoes. Mars has Olympus Mons, the largest volcano in the solar system, and Jupiter's moon Io has volcanic activity, so intense it glows. Scientists study these extraterrestrial volcanoes to understand the geology of other planets, and even the potential for finding life in extreme environments. Volcanoes are a reminder of Earth's raw power. They destroy and create, shaping our planet and even life itself. Next time you see a volcano, remember the incredible forces at work beneath your feet. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this deep dive into volcanoes, don't forget to like, subscribe, and let me know in the comments what topic we should explore next on Turn Back Time. Till next time, stay curious.